Hello, this is Justin from The Tech Train here and with a Blender tutorial today. Quite a lot of my students at school are creating 3D blimp models like this. Uh, so they're creating these 3D models of airships or blimps with logos, colours and designs, uh, largely because they're working on the Edexcel Cider course, which requires them to make uh, 3D models of blimps. Now the software that we're going to be using is Blender, which is completely free. Uh, you can get it by going to blender.org and once you've installed it, uh, it'll look like this. So I'm going to show you step by step how to create a 3D model like this, starting with this. <laughs> So to begin with, we need to actually get rid of the default cube, which will appear. So if you've just opened Blender, and I'm assuming for the purpose of this tutorial that you've never used Blender before. If you have, then I apologise for um, going over some of the basics, but this is primarily aimed at people who have never really touched Blender before uh, or have minimal experience of 3D modelling. I'm also um, working on the basis that we're looking at the simplest possible solution for this kind of model. So whilst professional model makers might be aghast at some of the things that I'm doing, um, the idea of this is simply to create an effective, uh, nice looking, but very simple model. Um, but I will along the way show you things that you could perhaps do to add a little more detail and accuracy to your model. So let's get rid of this cube to begin with. We do that by keeping the mouse somewhere in this window and pressing the delete key on our keyboard. Uh, then we click the delete menu that appears so we have an empty stage. Now on the left hand side of your screen you'll see a number of tabs there written sideways. Uh, we're going to click on the second tab down which says create and you'll see here uh, a list of shapes that we can choose. Now we're going to choose the UV sphere. So click once on UV sphere and you'll see a kind of a golf ball type uh, shape appear in the middle of the screen. Now one of the ways in which we will need to be able to look at our model is to zoom in and out. And we can do that by using the wheel on the top of your mouse. So roll the wheel forwards to zoom in and roll it backwards to zoom out. If you press and hold the wheel button on the top of your mouse, you can also rotate your view around, above and below your shape or your model at any time. Now, having created this UV sphere, one of the things I want to do is to make sure that it has an odd number of sides. If you're looking down on this uh, and you would account around the size, so each of these rings would account the number of faces on each ring, uh, they will be 32. And in fact, if we look at the bottom left here, you'll see that that's written in the segments section, 32. Now that'd be fine, except for the fact that uh, most blimps, and certainly the blimp that we're creating, uh, this model here, uh, this has three fins. So what we need to do is to make sure that those fins are equally distanced from each other. And if we have 32 sides, that's impossible. We can't have them equally distanced. So we need to have them uh, with an odd number and preferably a number that's divisible equally by three. Now, of course, if you only want two fins on yours, one at the top, one at the bottom, uh, then you'll want an even number. If you want a, a three fins, then you'll want a number divisible by three and so forth. So because I want three fins on this, I'm going to change the number of segments from 32 to 33. And when I press enter, you'll see that we just get a slightly um, decreased size or width of each face. But now we have 33 faces on each ring. It seems a small point, but later on it'll just help increase the accuracy. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this uh, sphere to make it taller and more like the sort of shape we'd expect to see in a blimp. So again, keeping the mouse somewhere in the middle of the screen, we're going to press the letter S, which stands for scale. 
And you'll see if I now move my mouse left and right, we can change the scale or the size of the sphere. Problem is, we're changing the scale in all directions or all axes at the same time. We only want to scale it in the vertical direction. So I'm going to press Z, and when I do that, that limits the scale to this vertical axis. And so what I'm going to do is stretch that out so it's roughly uh, blimp shaped like that. That'll do there. And then I left click when I'm happy with that. So now we've created the basic blimp shape. Yes, it's vertical. That's fine. We'll be rotating everything around later on. Uh, but once we've created this vertical blimp, the next thing to do is to edit the top here. Now you'll notice that most blimps uh, that you see have uh, a thinner end, usually the back where these fins can be found, and a stubbier or fatter end there. So you'll see it's not symmetrical. It's thin at this end and uh, fat, uh, flatter at this end. So what we're going to do is flatten this top section here. Now we can't do that in this current view. All we can do in this view is change the overall dimensions or scale of the shape. What we need to do is to go into the shape and start manipulating these individual faces or just one part of the shape. And we can do that by switching from object mode down here to edit mode. If I click on edit mode, you'll see that we get a wireframe representation of our blimp um, and it also ends up going orange. That simply means that it's selected. Now we need to be able to look flat on uh, on this uh, shape here. So what we're going to do is come back down to this menu at the bottom. Uh, be aware that there are two menus. There's one at the very bottom of your screen, but that's just for animation, which we're not going to worry about in this tutorial. We're looking at this menu here, which is immediately under this window pane here. So we've changed to edit mode. We're then going to click on view and choose left. And we're also going to go back to view and choose view persp ortho. That simply switches between perspective mode and orthographic mode. So if I click on there, uh, you'll see it becomes more like a, a plan view of a house. A photograph of a house would mean that the rooms and walls furthest away from you would appear smaller. Of course, in reality, they're not. And a plan view, an architectural view of a house uh, would show all walls the exact dimensions and size that they would be, no matter how far away or nearby they would be. So orthographic mode simply means that we can see the far side of our blimp in exactly the same dimensions as the near side. Now at the moment the whole blimp is selected uh, orange, we don't want that, so I'm going to press A on my keyboard and that will deselect the shape. A simply means all and it switches between selecting everything and selecting nothing. So just make sure that you've pressed A so that nothing is selected on your blimp. The next thing we're going to do is come back down to this menu at the bottom and find the little button that's just to the right of these three cubes here. It's a button that looks a little bit like a, a white uh, square with four little white dots in the corners. If you hover the mouse over, it says that it's limit selection to visible. Now, what this means, uh, at the moment it's pressed in, so you can see a darker background, and that means that I can only actually manipulate or select those faces which I can actually see. So they're this side of the uh, blimp. It means I can't actually manipulate or affect the faces or the sides on the opposite side of the blimp. So that's not really very helpful. So I'm going to click that button off and you'll see when I click it off, it has a light colored background. Um, so now I'm able to select both the faces on this side of the blimp as well as the faces on the opposite side. Now to select part of the blimp, uh, we're going to press B which brings up these crosshairs and then position the uh, mouse to the top left of the blimp. And then we just simply click and drag across the top third. Why are we doing this? Well, simply because a blimp is not symmetrical. It has a thin end here and a fat end. So this is going to be the fat end or the flat end of the blimp. So we've selected that top section to squash it down. 
To do that, we're going to press S to scale it again. And of course, when we press S, we're just going to end up scaling it in all sorts of uh, weird ways, which we don't want. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is press the letter Z to lock it to the vertical axis only. So pretty much the same process as we did before. And then what we're going to do is make sure that we're moving the mouse just gently, uh, just move the mouse very, very slightly until we end up with that slightly stubbier, flatter end. So something like that is fine. So I'm going to press A again to deselect it. And we can clearly see now that we've got this thinner, more pointed end, which is where our fins are going to be. And then this flatter end at the top. So we're starting to create the general uh, shape of our blimp. The next thing to do is to start adding the fins themselves. So let's have a look now at how we can create the fins on our blimp. So to create the fins on the blimp, remember, first of all, we're working at this end, the more tapered end of the um, of the blimp. Now, if we zoom in, we no longer see that thin end. So a couple of things that we might need to do. First of all, we might need to press and hold the middle mouse button, the wheel mouse button, which will allow us to rotate this around so that we can see that bottom end more clearly. Now you'll see that when I do that, it gets a little confusing because we can see through the blimp to the opposite sides. Uh, that's because we switched this option here, limit selection to visible, off just now. That was useful when we wanted to be able to select the faces on the back as well as the front. But for the moment, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to click this button on again, and you'll see now I can't see the faces on the opposite side any longer, which makes it a bit easier to see. And I can start to choose where I want the fins to be. But as well as being able to manipulate it in 3D like that, what we might want to do is simply to slide the whole thing up and down. So you'll see like that, so just uh, panning up and down. How am I doing that? Well, I'm still using the wheel on my mouse, which I use to zoom in and out, but this time I'm holding the shift key down. Holding the shift key and then using the wheel allows you to slide the image up and down. Similarly, if I hold down control and I use the wheel on my mouse, I can slide the image from side to side. So what I want to do is sort of a combination of both of those things. I want to be able to roll it uh, vertically slightly like that so we can see this end, but also hold shift down so that we can see exactly what we're doing. So a view like this is about right. And now we need to decide where are the fins going to be coming out from. They're going to be fairly near this back end, but we don't want them to be too close, otherwise the fins will be very, very small. I think I'm going to go for this ring here. So this ring of faces, uh, which I'm just going to click there. So this ring of faces here, that's where the fins are going to come out of. Now, to be able to select a face, we need to click on this third cube button down here. At the moment, you'll have this first one selected. Uh, this is the cube with a little orange dot in the corner, and that allows you to select uh, corners or vertices. The second cube has a, uh, an orange line that goes uh, right along the edge on the left hand side. And of course, that is to select edges. And the third little cube here with an orange face is, no surprises, face select. This allows you to select faces, which is what we want to do now. Now, to select, uh, in most programs that you're familiar with, you normally select something by left clicking. Uh, this uh, 3D modeling is a little different because to select a face, what we actually have to do is to right click on the face we want to select. So make sure that you can see your um, blimp, the bottom end of your blimp clearly. Make sure that you have switched on the limit selection divisible and that you've chosen the face select here. Once you've done that uh, and you've chosen whereabouts your first fin will be, right click to select that face. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extrude that face. What the heck does extrude mean? Extrude simply means to pull out. 
So if I press E for extrude, and then I use my mouse, you'll see I'm literally pulling that face out. Let me just show you from a different angle. I'm going to do it from here. So I'm going to press E to extrude, and then use my mouse to pull that face out. Now we could do this, and we could create our first fin like this. That would be wonderful. Uh, however, the problem is going to be trying to make all the fins the same size. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it, but rather than using the mouse to pull the faces out, we're going to type in the values that we want to use. Of course, this is an option where you don't have to follow what I do exactly. You could simply extrude, E for extrude, pull it out to wherever you want to be, uh, to something like that. And then what I'm going to do, once I've done that and left clicked, I'm going to press S to scale it and then just move my mouse to pull that in slightly. And that creates that nice blade effect. But trying to get all three of my fins the same exact size is going to be next to impossible. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to press E to extrude, but then I'm going to type the number one on my keyboard. And you'll see that what that does is it extrudes it one, uh, one value, if you like. Uh, one value is one of those squares that you see in the background of my picture. If you want to do it a little bit further, you could type 1.5 and that'll bring it out to 1.5. I'm going to press escape to cancel that and I'm going to press E again and then type 1. That'll be fine for me. And then I'm going to press enter. Now we're going to scale it and again we could simply press S and then use the wheel on the mouse to, to decide whereabouts that should be. But instead we can press S and then I'm going to type 0.5 on my keyboard and that will then scale it to half the width of one square. So pressing enter now means that that fin is exactly uh, one block out and then half a block width at the end. And now what I'm going to do is decide where the next two uh, fins will need to be. Now, if you remember way, way ago when we created this UV sphere, we decided on 33 faces on each ring. So that means that I can count nice and easily exactly where the next blade should be. So if this blade is coming out here, uh, then I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 there. So that will be uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's the 11th one which means the next fin will need to be there. So make sure that you're uh, counting along and you're uh, doing it equally. You could do it by pure judgment. You could decide whereabouts looks a third. That's absolutely fine. You can do it that way. But because we've gone to the trouble of making sure we have um, a number of faces that's divisible by three, we'll use that. So having selected that face, make sure it's on the same ring. We're going to press E to extrude it and then type 1 on the keyboard and press enter. And then we're going to press S to scale the end of it and type 0.5 and then press enter. And if I roll this shape around you'll see those two fins are now exactly the same size and the end is exactly the same. So now we need to make sure that our third fin is again equally distanced. So counting along that's the fin then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which means my next fin will be here. Because then if I counted 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there's my first fin. So I know that's exactly um, equally distanced. So right clicking on that face, again I'm going to type E to extrude it, 1, to extrude it one uh, place, press enter, and then S to scale it, type 0.5, and then press enter. So what we've got now is the uh, fins on our blimp exactly uh, the same shape, exactly the same size, um, and that's looking really good. So now we've created the um, fins on our blimp, the next thing to do is to add the gondola. And the gondola is, of course, this section underneath. Now, you can make the gondola um, as complicated or as simple as you like. For this tutorial, I'm simply going to uh, create it as a box. So I'm not going to worry about any windows or fans or motors or anything like that. It's not really necessary for this particular piece of coursework. 
Uh, but of course, if you're making a blimp that is nothing to do with this coursework, you're just wanting to learn a little bit about uh, Blender, then you know, go to town on it uh, and have as much fun as you want making that uh, gondola. But I'm going to keep it quite simple for this. So to add the gondola, the first thing I need to do is to make sure that it's going to be exactly between, well, it doesn't matter which two fins, but exactly between two fins. So what I'm going to do is zoom in again on this. The gondola is going to be directly opposite uh, this. Uh, so it's going to be between two of these fins. Let's rotate that around. So if I had one, two, three, four faces, and then my gondola, and on this side, one, two, three, four faces, and then the gondola, that means that I've got two faces selected in the middle and they're exactly equally distanced from these two fins. Now, how did I select more than one face? If you right click on a face and then you right click on another face, of course, you are deselecting the first one. So to select multiple faces, simply hold the shift key down. So click on the first face uh, with your right mouse button, of course, then hold shift down and right click on the second face. Now I don't actually want the gondola there, it's a little bit too far back. Um, I think probably about there is right. So I'm gonna select the two faces which will become the gondola and then just rotating it to the side slightly, I'm gonna press E and it doesn't matter too much, there's only one gondola so it doesn't matter how far it is. Uh, I'm not going to type a number in, you can do if you want, but I'm just going to do it judging it by eye. And I think somewhere there looks about right, and so I'll left click. So now we have the whole of our um, blimp. It is pointing in the wrong direction, don't worry, we'll rotate that around in a moment. Uh, but we now have the stubby end of the blimp, we have the fins, all of which are exactly uh, equally distanced, the right shape, the right size and we have our gondola. So it's now time to rotate the blimp and to add some lights so that when we start to add things like our logo and our colors, we'll be able to see more accurately exactly what we're doing. So we've now finished uh, working in edit mode for now. We've finished doing the shape of our gondola so what we're going to do is come back down to the bottom here where we've got edit mode selected and we're going to change that back to object mode. So we can now see the, the object as a whole. Now the next thing we need to do is to rotate it around and if I zoom out you will see that actually uh, we're completely upside down at the moment. Uh, there's, uh, that's a light um, and there's another light there and somewhere we'll have a camera. Uh, so I'm going to simply move the whole scene around by holding the middle mouse button down, rolling it forward so that we're now looking at it this way instead. And that's the camera there, and that's a lamp. So now our blimp is pointing directly up, which isn't really what we want. We need to rotate it. So what we're going to do, um, I'm just spinning myself around so that I can see the gondola on the side, so I know which is the bottom of the blimp. And I'm now going to press the letter R on my keyboard to rotate. Now if I press R, oops, and I've right clicked on the lamp earlier on, let me just right click on the gondola to select that. So if I press R to rotate, you can see we can rotate it quite freely using the mouse. But that means we're going to have to be really careful working out exactly where we are uh, in terms of, of making it horizontally aligned perfectly. So just as we typed numbers earlier on to make these fins exactly the same size and the same shape, we're going to rotate it because we know we're rotating at 90 degrees. So we press R to rotate it, and then we type 90 on the keyboard, and then press Enter. So now that our gondola is rotated exactly 90 degrees, it's exactly horizontal. However, it may not be perfectly lined up, and if I rotate round to the back of the gondola, actually that's not too bad. It's just very slightly off, I think, uh, but if we want to rotate it, look from the, uh, the back of your gondola, and then if you press R, you can then rotate your blimp around. And it may be that yours is, is way off like that to begin with. So just rotate it around so that your gondola is pointing down and the fin at the top, of course, is pointing directly up. And when you're happy with that, 
left click to select it. So now our gondola is um, the right way round and even. You'll see that it's sort of sunk down beneath this grid. That's not terribly important, but if you want to lift it up above that grid, uh, just so you don't have this mesh in your way all the time, uh, use the blue arrow on this little controller here. You can use that to lift up your blimp so it's above that uh, ground there. So now we're looking at the blimp model. That's looking great. Um, and it looks fairly well lit at the moment, but that's not really uh, how the model will look. At the bottom here, we've got object mode, and immediately after that, we have this little white circle. Now that's solid. We've been working in solid mode the whole time. Let's switch over to, say, material. Ah, what on earth has happened? Well, now it's rendering our image as it will look in the final render. And the reason it's black on that side is if I zoom out, we only have one light. So this, as I say here, is a camera, uh, which will be very useful later on. And this is a lamp. So the lamp is on this side. And of course, it's only lighting up that side of the blimp. It's not lighting up this side at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, it's, it's up to you, uh, we could add a couple more lamps, uh, we could also add suns. I'm going to add a couple of suns for this uh, tutorial because I think that's quite a simple uh, solution. So now what we're going to do is zoom out a little bit and you will need to, uh, to do a lot of zooming and rolling around uh, to see your uh, blimp from all different angles because you want to make sure it's well lit for this. So on the left hand side, make sure that you're in the create tab. So again at the top here we've got these uh, these different tabs. Uh, click create then down here you might have to scroll down to find it but there's sun. I'm going to click on sun and you'll see that we now have this new object here selected and you might well find that your image already begins to light up. So what we'll need to do is to move that sun around. It's really hard to tell whether that sun is behind our blimp, in front of the blimp, uh, if I look down on it, it's hard to know whether it's above the blimp or below the blimp. So you really will have to rotate yourself around at all angles to really get a feel for where that light is. Now we've put a sun, it's appeared underneath our blimp, but for some bizarre reason, the underneath of our blimp is complete dark. Why is that? Well, you'll see this orange line coming from the sun. And unlike the sun that we're familiar with in the sky, although to be honest, uh, I'm in England and it's really just a theory as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but unlike the sun, which emanates light in all directions, these lights, uh, these suns here, uh, direct their light along this line. So what I'm going to do is lift up the sun, first of all, using that blue um, light there. And then I'm going to use the uh, red arrow to move it across like this um, and then what I'm going to do is press R and this is the rotate and you'll see as I press R we rotate that line and you can see the effect on the blimp itself we're lighting up different parts of the blimp now I want to um, light up most of the left hand side of the blimp so I'm going to uh, leave it about there that seems to be a good effect but then I'm going to rotate around and look at it from this angle now what I do, you'll see that if I press R now, the lamp is rotating, sorry, the sun is rotating around that angle. So basically, whatever position you're looking at the light from is the, um, the angle at which the light will swing. So you can rotate around um, and affect that light from all sorts of different uh, directions. It is a little tricky. It's not terribly intuitive to begin with. Um, my only advice really would be to keep moving around the image so that you get a feel for the relative position of your light with your blimp. Uh, just keep rolling around it, looking at it from every angle. It doesn't matter if it's not fully lit up. In fact, uh, if the blimp was in the sky, then the top section of it would be lit, obviously, but the underside might not be as well lit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is once I've added that first sun, I'm going to add a second one on the other side that's sort of bisecting that line of light, if you like. So I click on lamp 
uh, sorry, click on sun again. Um, and we can use these arrows to move it around. You can also press the letter G on your keyboard and that'll allow you to just simply drag and move it around. But that again gets quite tricky uh, working out exactly where it is in relation to your model. So um, I would again advise that you just keep moving around so that you can understand where your light is in relation to the model. So again, I'm going to press R to rotate the light and you'll see I can bring it around there and light up most of that side of my blimp. That's looking pretty good. It's a little dark on the other side. That's absolutely fine. If you want to, you can add more lights. You can add lights underneath it, which shine up. Uh, but for my purposes, that's about fine now. So just play around with the lights. Don't rush this bit uh, because this will make a big difference um, in future. So once you've added your suns and you're happy with the, uh, the lighting, uh, the next thing to do now is to start adding color um, and adding images to the blimp. So let's look at how we can uh, add the colors and the textures to our blimp model. So now that we've built the model and we've lit it so that we can see it more clearly, the next thing to do is to add the textures and the colors. Now we'll tackle those separately. The texture first of all, uh, which will be the logo. Um, perhaps that's the logo of, uh, if you're doing the side of food, uh, side of course, the food festival logo perhaps, or whatever else uh, image it is you're adding. So for example, here, this was the school logo. Um, that's separate from the colors, which you see at either end. So there's the image in the middle, and then there's the colored decoration at the ends. Uh, so we'll just tackle the uh, image for the moment in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is to, first of all, make sure that I'm selecting the blimp. Now you'll notice at the moment, the orange selection is for the light. So this sun here, that's the thing that I'm currently selecting. And in fact, on the right hand side at the top, you'll see this is the list of all the things in the world. And the sun, sun number one, is the item that's selected. So I need to right click on the blimp to select that. So make sure that it's the blimp that you're selecting. And then we need to switch back into edit mode. So down at the bottom here, we've got this menu, object or edit mode. You can also swap between the two modes by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. So either use the menu down here or press tab to switch between object and edit mode. We want to be in edit mode. Now you'll still have the face select chosen um, down here at the bottom. So make sure that you do, but if you haven't made any changes, it still will be selected from uh, before. So we've got face select there. Um, and what we need to do now is to decide where the logo will appear. So you need to kind of visualize, uh, first of all, which side it's gonna be on. It could be on both if you want. But bearing in mind the size and the dimensions of your logo, you need to think about, uh, is it gonna be a very, very long logo? Is it gonna be quite narrow? Is it gonna be tall? Is it gonna be wide? So you need to visualize it because of course, if you've got a very square logo and you decide to um, apply it to a very long, narrow section of your blimp, then your logo is gonna end up very distorted and that won't look good at all. So you want to select an area of the side of the blimp that is roughly the same proportions, the same shape as the logo or the image that you're looking to apply. Uh, now to select multiple sides, which is what we're going to do here, we can either right click and then hold down shift and keep, uh, keep on selecting all of the uh, sides or the faces which we think will become our advert, our logo. So like that, uh, or alternatively, what you can do is press the letter C on your keyboard. Uh, the mouse will then uh, have this little white circle around it. Uh, you can increase and decrease the size of that circle by using the wheel on your mouse. And then you can simply paint across those faces that you want to um, have displaying your advert or your logo. 
so there we are. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can either uh, make the uh, wheel a bit smaller and then uh, middle click on those faces you don't want to include. Or of course, you can simply press um, A and deselect everything. Now, I'm going to use uh, the Tech Train logo and it's a slight rectangle, uh, but I'm going to go press letter C, increase the size of that slightly. Um, and I think it will probably work if I paint it across this area here, something like that. There we are. So once you've selected the area, if you're using the letter C um, and you've got this circle, simply right click uh, when you're happy. So that's the area which will display the logo. Uh, the next thing to do is on the right hand side, this whole panel on the right, which we've pretty much ignored so far. It may be that you want to stretch that out a little bit, just grab the left hand end, um, because it's this row of buttons here that you're looking at and you want to be able to use. And it may be that uh, if I push that in, you're only seeing you know, half a dozen of them. So pull it out so you can clearly see all of the buttons on this row here. Next, what we're gonna do is uh, add a uh, material. So here you'll see a little sort of bronze sphere. So click once on that to uh, bring up the materials palette. We're gonna be using quite a few materials uh, in the course of this, but uh, what we're gonna do is uh, click plus here to add a new material to our list. Um, and then we'll click the new button underneath. Once we've done that, that material is now the material that we're applying to this section of our blimp. We're going to the button just after it, which is this little sort of chessboard button. I'm going to click on that. And then at the bottom, we're going to click on new. Now, by default, usually you'll find the type of image is set as image or movie. If it's not, you want to make sure it is image or movie. So just make sure that the type of image there is selected and then come down here to the open button uh, where you can open your um, image that you're going to use. So I'm going to use the Tech Train logo like that. So you can see the logo appears in the preview here. You won't see it over here. Uh, we will just change this to make sure that we've got here uh, material selected. So just after the edit mode, that little bronze circle, we've changed that a couple of times. Make sure material selected, but we still won't see that displayed just yet. So we've selected it on the right hand side. Next, what we need to do is to um, what we call unwrap uh, this section. So if you can imagine cutting out this part of our blimp, and then flattening it out, ironing out, and putting it as a flat image on the page, on, on, the, on the desk, and then getting our logo and matching it up to the right shape and size and orientation and rotation and so forth. So once we've done the texture on the right hand side, on the left hand side in this window, uh, hover the mouse somewhere over your blimp and press the letter U. This brings up the UV mapping menu and you want the top option, which is unwrap. Now at this point we can see the material appear, but it's a bit wrong. It's not quite in the right position. It's the wrong way around. So we need to alter that. And what we need to do is to uh, bring up a second window. So this first window here is, is our modeling window. Uh, at the very top right corner of this, you'll see little, little um, triangle shape, perhaps three little lines to make up a triangle. If you put your mouse on there and drag left, you create a second window. Now this second window, we don't want it to be another modeling window, no point. We want it to be a sort of mapping window so we can map this texture. So what we need to do is come down to the bottom of this window, head left, this vertical bar in the middle is part of the right hand side window, just as we have a vertical bar on the left hand side of the left hand window so this vertical bar here is part of the right hand side of the screen so come down to the bottom of it you have this little white square uh, with the two arrows you click on that and we change the view to UV image editor like that so now what we're seeing is the orange section here is a representation of the part of our blimp that we have selected on the left but we don't see our texture, so we need to open that. So what we can do is you can either click on open here and go and find the image, 
Or you'll also find on the left hand side a little picture here with two up and down arrows and you should see the, uh, the texture we've already loaded into Blender is listed there. We can click on that. So now we see the texture in this window um, and we can see this, this grid and we can kind of work out now why we're not seeing the whole of the image. On the left hand side of the model you can see that the top section of the logo is cut off. And on the right hand side, again, you can see the top section of the logo is cut off. So with this frame, with this orange section selected, let's press G. G allows us to move the frame around. And as I do, you'll see that on the left hand side in the modeling window, that um, texture is moving with us. Now it's still the wrong way around. So I'm going to drop that somewhere in the middle, just left click. And now I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to press R to rotate. And then I'm going to move my mouse and rotate that around so it's the right orientation, something like that. Now, of course, the grid we're working with isn't an exact rectangle. It's curved uh, on both ends. And that is because we're working with a curved shape. So this UV mapping is taking our flat 2D image and it is stretching it, deforming it and mapping it to a 3D image. So once we've got it the right way round here, we need to now scale it up. It's obviously not wide enough here. So I need to press S to scale it. That just makes it huge or small. I want to limit it to the X axis. So I'm going to press X. That just means I can make it now as wide or narrow as I want. I want to make it exactly the right width. So just using your mouse, just very gently, bring that in so it's about the right width. Click and try again, so S and then X, bring that in about there. Let's zoom in a bit, make sure we're doing that right. Yeah, that's about right there. Uh, so we can check in this window. We can also check on the left-hand side. Uh, our frame is too tall, really, so let's distort that a little bit more. So I'm going to press S to scale it and then Y to lock it to the vertical axis and then bring that down so it's about the right height. So about there, I think, and you can see on the left hand side, that's looking, that's looking quite good there. So using G to move this frame around, using S to scale it and then locking it either to the X axis or the Y axis, um, and possibly, of course, rotating it as well might be necessary. So once we've got the, uh, the image mapped out like that, that's fine. We finished with the UV mapping window. So at the top here, where we have that little triangle in the corner, we can click on that, drag it just slightly to the right hand side. And as I do, I've not moved it much. You'll see um, a sort of a shadow of an arrow pointing to the right hand side. And that simply means if I let go now, I can get rid of that window. So we've now got the texture on our model. And if I press tab to come out of edit mode, back into object mode, uh, we can start to see that that uh, texture that we've applied is now on our model. And we could do the same thing on the opposite side if you want to. So you could add a texture on the opposite side. You could add a second texture to a fin or wherever you want to do it. I'm just going to add the one texture for the moment. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do, uh, if you see the example I had over here, I've added the uh, texture. I'm now going to look at how I can paint certain sections of the model in different colors. Let's look at how we can paint sections of our model in a variety of colors. So now that we've added the logo or the textures, let's look at how we can paint or color some of the faces on our model. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to paint the fins here, the same sort of blue color uh, as is used in the logo here. So the way to do this, first of all, will be to switch back into edit mode. So either press tab uh, or alternatively come down to the menu at the bottom and press edit mode. So we got into edit mode. We've still got this section here selected. So I'm going to press A to deselect that. If when you press A, the whole thing goes orange, then simply press A again to um, deselect everything. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have face select chosen down here still. So that's these three uh, little cubes at the bottom. So we click the one that's on the right hand side, face select. 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is just rotate the view around, zoom in a bit. Don't forget you can use shift and the wheel on your mouse to uh, pan up and down or control and the wheel on your mouse to pan left or right. So I'm going to right click on the first face there. Uh, then I'm going to hold shift down and right click on that face and that face. Now I'll need to rotate the view around and just move that into position. Um, and then I need to hold down shift again, right click on that face and that one. So now I've selected all of the faces of that fin. What I'm going to do is on the right hand side where these buttons are, click back on the little bronze sphere. Um, so that's our materials. We're going to add a new material. So we click the plus button just on the right hand side here and then click new at the bottom just underneath. So click new and now I can choose the color and that's just underneath this preview of a sphere. There's a little white box underneath the heading diffuse. So I can click on that and I can just simply now choose any color that I want. Um, so I'm going to choose uh, a blue that's very similar to this color here. So I'm going to choose a sort of darkish blue. It's a bit too purple. With all the lights and everything, it will look a little different uh, ultimately. But I'm going to choose that blue there. I think that'll do for the moment. So we can choose that blue. Um, and then what we need to do once we've chosen the color is just click assign up here to assign that color material to all the faces that we've selected. So I click assign and now all of those faces have turned that blue color. So what I can do now is uh, come down to this second fin down here and I'm going to uh, right click on the first fin, hold shift down and then select the other faces on the fin and the underside as well. And once we've selected all those faces, uh, we simply have this list of materials now and we can see the blue one selected there. Click on the blue one and assign it. And then final fin the same way. So right click to select all of the faces and then choose the material, the color we want to use. We'll go for that blue again and click assign. So basically all you need to do is uh, to create the color uh, that you want um, and then select the faces and click assign once you've done that. Let's add a different one. Let's have a, a black nose or a dark gray nose to match the gray of the, uh, the train logo there. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to press uh, A to deselect everything. I'm going to look face on and I'm going to press C. So I've got my sort of face select brush there. And I'm going to paint over all the faces on the front of my blimp like that. So I'm going to go around carefully um, and then select everything in the middle. So I've now selected the whole of the front part of the blimp. Uh, in fact, I think I might just select a little bit more. So let's just go around one more ring like this. There we go. Uh, right click once we've uh, finished with that selection tool. So we're going to now color uh, the nose, this uh, gray color. So what I'm going to do is on the right hand side, add another material. So click that add button there to add another material and then click the new button underneath. And then in the diffuse box, just choose the color that we want to use. So I'm going to go for a gray color. So that means just simply dragging this slider down. You can sort of see the preview um, in this sphere here. That's what we're looking at. Uh, so we'll just choose a, a dark gray. I'm going to make it a little bit darker so we see a real contrast. There we are. And once we've chosen the color, don't forget to hit this assign button. Um, that's now assigned the color to the front. And just so that we're reusing these colors, I'm going to color the gondola the same color. So what I'm going to do is right click on each of the faces of the gondola holding down the shift key as usual and then once we've selected all the faces of the gondola uh, because we've already got the material selected this gray material here 
I'm simply going to click on that grey material and click Assign. And that now assigns those colours. So if I now press Tab again to come out of Edit Mode and I'm into the Model Mode, we can see uh, that our blimp is looking pretty good. So we've now got the shape of the blimp, we've got it lit up, we've got our logo on it, and we've added the colours as well to decorate the blimp. So we're pretty much there. That's all the modelling. The next thing to do is to position the camera and render a final picture of our blimp. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. Let's, uh, let's uh, position the camera and render the blimp. So first of all, you might be asking the question, what do we mean by render the blimp? Uh, rendering is when the computer or blender works out all the light angles, uh, works out all the colors and produces a much higher final quality picture of our blimp. We're still looking at this as a, as a pretty rough and ready preview. Um, so the render will be the final full quality picture. Now, in order to be able to produce that picture, we need a camera to take the picture. And you might remember from earlier on, we have a camera. Here it is right here. Um, and we can sort of see that that camera is pointed at our blimp, but it's on the wrong side. So how do we move that camera around? Well, we can move it using the same controls as we moved our blimp with. So these colored arrows here or pressing G to drag it. But my preferred method and I think a lot of people would agree here, is to actually go inside the camera and fly the camera to where we want to be. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, what we're gonna do is change the view. So at the bottom here, where well, we've already changed the view a couple of times, we're gonna click on view and choose camera. So that brings this view up. What we're looking at now is exactly what the camera can see. So we've kind of grayed out most of the screen and just this light area here is what the camera is looking at. And straight away we can see the camera is looking at my blimp from the wrong side and it's looking a bit too far down. We're cutting off the top part of the uh, blimp. So how do we move the camera? Well, the first thing to do is to make sure that it's the camera that's selected and not the blimp. So the easiest way of doing that, if you uh, haven't, like I just did, click on the camera, is to use this little menu in the right hand corner, the top right hand corner. Here we can see all the lamps and the sphere, which is your blimp itself. Um, there's the camera. So simply click on the camera to select it. And now you'll see you'll have this orange frame around this window. So once the camera is selected, hover the mouse somewhere inside this window hold the shift key down and press the letter F. So you'll get some crosshairs in the middle of the screen once you press uh, shift F. Um, but what you can also find is as you move your mouse around, the picture is moving. Or rather the picture's not moving, the camera is moving its position. But here's where it gets really good. If you've ever played computer games that use the ASDF keys for moving around, um, this is just like that. Uh, so on your keyboard, I would generally hold the mouse with the right hand um, and then I would put the uh, your fingers on the A and D keys. That allows you to slide left and right. So A and D move you left and right. And then with your second finger on either W or S, W moves you in and S moves you back. And then you've also got Q and E. So Q moves you down and E moves you up. So if you're not used to playing computer games that use these keys, it can be a little bit fiddly. But by using a combination of the mouse to change the angle that you're looking at and using those keys, you can actually move the camera around until you get the perfect view of your blimp. And I want to be able to see the blimp from the front so I can see the dark nose. Um, and I want, I think something like that looks about good. Uh, so I'm going to select that view there, make sure that it's all nicely framed. Uh, one thing that I will say though, is that if you're planning on using this picture in a scene, so rather than simply having your uh, blimp floating in midair with nothing around it, you want to have buildings um, around your blimp, which if you're doing coursework, you certainly will. 
uh, then you might want to think about the angle that you'll be looking at your blimp from. So you won't be looking at it from sideways on unless you are the same height as the blimp, which is unlikely. You'll be on the ground looking up at the blimp. In which case, what you'll probably want to do is to come right down here and take a shot looking up at your blimp like that. So that when you take the picture and you put it into a picture uh, of buildings or of uh, festival uh, tents or whatever, um, then it will look more natural that you're looking up at the blimp. Of course, what you can tell is if I was to do that here, um, I would need to add more lights because the underside of my blimp is really uh, far too dark for that. So I would add some more lights, but I'm going to look at it uh, flat on like this, so somewhere like that, and then left click once you're happy with that position. You can always change it if you want to. So once we've done that, the next step is to render it, although there is another option that you might want to include. So another option which you might consider is a way of smoothing this uh, texture. At the moment, it's uh, still quite um, sort of a low quality or, or low poly image. You can see all these different faces. If you head over to the left hand side where you have all of these tabs again, we click on tools, make sure that the uh, blimp is the thing that you have selected. Uh, once you've selected the blimp, on the tools tab on the left hand side if you come down to the shading section you'll see the option for smooth and if i click that you can see that it smooths the whole image so we don't have all those sharp angles anymore it looks more like a blimp would a blimp after all is an inflatable it's like a balloon it's stretched out and so you don't tend to get those uh, sharp jagged edges so by using this smooth button here, uh, you can quickly and easily smooth out that shape. Uh, yes, for the blender aficionados, there are uh, better and different ways of doing that. But for this project, that works absolutely fine. So now that we've smoothed our image, we've got our camera in position. Uh, let's have a look at the render tab. Now, the render tab is the little camera that you'll see over here on this row of tools. So click the little camera to bring up all the render windows. And what I would do, I wouldn't make many changes here, uh, but there are a couple of things that we will just change. Uh, first of all, the resolution. Um, you'll have that set probably automatically to your desktop size. Uh, so make sure that it is nice and large. And I would also make sure that this 50% is dragged all the way up to 100%. So it's the full size of your desktop. Nice, high quality uh, resolution there. So that'll be important. The next thing to do is to come down to uh, the shading tab here and you'll see that the alpha is selected to sky. Now, don't worry too much about what this means, but just change that from sky to transparent. What this will do when it renders your uh, blimp is it won't include any background. So it'll be the blimp and then just a transparent background behind it, which allows you to really easily take that picture and put it straight into another image of buildings or trees or whatever you want to do. So that'll give us a transparent background with just the blimp. And once you're happy with that, the final thing is to hit this render button at the top. So within the render tab, we've changed the resolution to 100%. In shading, we've changed the alpha to transparent. And then back up to the top of the render section, we click this render button. And when we do that, we'll end up with our final render of the image. So it's a high quality image. You can see all the shine reflections there. Uh, everything's looking good. And we have a transparent background. This checked area here won't actually show. The very final thing that we need to do now, of course, with the image is to save it. And to save this image, you'll need to come back down to this menu at the bottom, which will have changed a bit. Uh, click on the image menu there and simply save as image. So once you've saved it as an image, that's it. It'll be saved as a, a PNG. So we can just save that on the desktop, for example, there. I'll save as untitled for the moment uh, and click on save as image. Uh, and there it is. That is now saved as a transparent background. Uh, I can copy and put that straight into any image I like using as a Photoshop or GIMP or whatever your preference is. 
Um, to get back to the 3D model, just in case you do that and you think that's great, but I'd like a couple of different versions. So you might want to have another version of your rendered image where you're looking up at it, perhaps another one where you're changing the lighting a bit. So you might have a few different versions to play with. So to do that at the bottom left corner of this render window, you'll have to the left of view this little and that allows you to change back to 3D view. So click on 3D view, we're back to our camera view, uh, but I can change that by clicking on view and then any of these at all will do. Let's go left again. Uh, and there we are, we're back into our 3D view where we can start playing around with the lighting or making any other changes we want to. If we want to go to edit mode, we can now start uh, changing some of the colors and adding more textures if you want to before that we then render it again. Uh, do make sure you save your file of course as well you can do that just as easily uh, as you would in any other program simply click on file at the top and then save as when you do save it do make sure uh, that you are including the dot blend extension here so in the file name here type whatever you like uh, but make sure you have dot blend at the end of it and there we are that's how to create a realistic um, blimp 3d blimp using logos and textures and colors in blender uh, that's ideally suited for either a personal project or indeed if you are doing something along the lines of the edxl cider project so i hope that was useful to you i hope you enjoyed that uh, if you did please do give this video a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments, or indeed if this has helped you with your coursework projects at all, uh, please leave a comment below. I do read all comments and will reply as soon as I can. And um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you found this useful and you'd like uh, more of these videos in the future, then hit the subscribe button. And if you click the bell as well, then you will be notified as soon as a new video goes up line. So don't forget, hit like, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you very much indeed for watching. I'll see you in a future video. Bye for now.